Hey CAD friends, if you're lucky enough to own a 3080, you know that's a massive graphics card. It was so big that it wouldn't fit in my friend Brendan's case. But instead of buying a new case or hacking apart the case that he already had, we decided we'd just design and 3D print a case mod. Let's go. Okay CAD friends, so the case in question is the Leonly PC-011. And I'm told it's a very popular case on PC Master Race. This isn't a statement about whether the 3080 will fit in there. I'm sure it might, or it does. But with this combination of uh, water block that we were using, it just did not fit into the case. It was about a half inch too wide. So what we're going to have to do to make the card fit is we're going to have to space the glass out about that half an inch. This is going to include creating a spacer um, between the glass and the case as well as modifying these feet to fit the glass because it uses a unique, I guess, patented technique where the glass actually sits into these little nubbins that you can see over here. And then the bottom of the glass sits into the feet. So we're gonna have to modify both the feet and then add a spacer. So I was really worried that I was gonna have to take a bunch of measurements of the case and recreate it. But the people over at Leon Lee, Leanne Lee, Lee, I can't, I can't say, I don't know. Somebody tell me how to pronounce that. They actually include the SOLIDWORKS model for the entire case, which is amazing. So if you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you can just download the SOLIDWORKS file. So I'm going to quickly download that and throw it into SOLIDWORKS. Let's go. So I've got the SOLIDWORKS file imported now. I've dissolved the STP file, so I've got a little bit of mustard going on in the design tree, but that's okay. So we're going to start off with the base, with the feet. So if we look at this right now, and we look in the design tree, these are actually the same part number. But when we go to extend these, we're going to extend different sides of the foot. So that's actually going to make them into two different part numbers. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go into the design tree and we're just going to make this one independent. So that's going to break the link between this one and this one. And as you can see now, we have one that says copy of foot. So we're going to start by opening this up. Oh, no, you never want to do feature recognition. It, does, it doesn't work that good. I always just leave it as a body and then use some body tools in order to edit it. So we got our foot opened up. What we want to do is we want to extend this slot out a half an inch to where the glass is now going to sit. So there's two ways we could do this. We could either extrude boss the end out and then try and recreate the hole. Or what we're going to do is we're going to split the body in half and push that whole set whole end section with the slot outwards and then fix the gap in between. So to do this, we're gonna use the split tool. If you haven't seen the split tool before, check out our um, video on the logo sign. We use the split tool in detail in that video. There's a card somewhere here to look it up. So we're gonna just start, start a sketch and then pop this out. So we kind of want to split in this section right here so that it's easy to fix the geometry once we've shifted it out. So I think that's about three eighths. That looks about right. So this split tool is also going to split along the top face, which is what we want because I'm going to print it vertically this way. And these nubbins are going to require a lot of support material. I don't really want to deal with that. So we're just going to cut them off. And uh, when Brendan goes to align this, he can just align it by hand. So now that we got that in place, we're going to launch the split tool. Pick a template here and we're going to choose this body to cut and we're going to choose all four of these. So now you'll see that we have four solid bodies instead. We have that body, the nubbins and then the end body. So we're actually going to go ahead and delete the nubbins using the delete delete keep body so the bodies we're going to delete are going to be these nubbins and they're gone so we have a nice flat face so now we need to push that end out with the with the uh, slot a half an inch we're going to use something called the move bodies tool move move copy bodies so the bodies we want to move are this one here my computer is going to be a little slow grabbing this because there's a lot of geometry We've got that selected and then in our delta x here because that's the x direction we want to adjust this to exactly half an inch 
And we're gonna uncheck this copy because we just wanna move it. We do not want to create a copy. And there you go. So now that's now that's moved out a half inch. All we have to do is we have to repair the geometry in between it. So to do that, we're just going to start a sketch on this face. And we're going to convert the entities. And then we're going to extrude boss this all the way up to where our new section is. Let's change this to up to surface. Choose there. And there we go. We've got it all patched together. It's just that it's just that easy. So none of our other holes have moved. We've got that shifted out a half an inch. So we look like we're pretty good to go here. The only problem is this is too big to fit in my 3D printer. So we're gonna have to split it and then create some sort of alignment feature so that we can get a nice alignment so that it's looking good. So once again, we're gonna use the split tool. And if I haven't mentioned it, go see the logo sign video for the split, the split tool. Ever since I started uh, 3D printing, um, I've been using that split tool a lot. So I forgot to draw a line. We're gonna have to choose a good location for this. We're gonna put it over here because I don't really want to make the alignment feature have to deal with that. I'll make the split feature come all the way across, break this, and we'll make it, I don't know, oh actually, let's make it exactly halfway in between these. If I can get the top view here, I'll make it exactly halfway between there. Select midpoint, select line, tangent. So once again, launch that split tool. I should really uh, shortcut it because I use it so often. Let's get create our templates, select our body, and cut it. And there we go, we got, we got two bodies now. So I'm gonna open these up separately by creating them into their own part. So uh, insert into new part, choose a template, leave it as whatever naming convention and save this as front foot right okay so now we just got this part so we're gonna have to do some fancy geometry here so well, not really fancy we're just gonna go into this we're gonna convert these entities and then try and make this pretty 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 I don't know, let's try and let's try and follow this. Convert this entity maybe and convert this one maybe. And convert this one. Extend this down. We're gonna do in the past, if you looked at the logo video, um we had done some dowels to alignment, but luckily this one we're gonna print um, vertically this way. So there's gonna be just a very small about amount of cleanup if we do kind of a slot feature. So now we're gonna extrude boss this out. Something's not touching. Oh, right here. Found the culprit. There you go. That's better. So we're just gonna flip this around and we need to only make it, I don't know, quarter inch should be good. That looks all right, kind of matches up. And then we just need to do the rectangle. So we're gonna click on this, the actual slot for it to sit in. I'm gonna rip through this because it's just gonna be a bunch of extruded bossing, so you guys don't need to sit through that.
So there we have it. We have the two parts all made up here into their own separate things. We have a nice alignment feature. So these are going to get printed this way. So there's going to be a little bit of cleanup on the bottom edge of this, but very little. So that's going to be nice. So that's the front. I'm going to go ahead and do the same for the opposite side off camera because it's going to be the exact same thing. But let's move on to doing that front spacer now. All right, so we got our case opened up here. So we're going to be using a lot of convert entities because we're going to be needing to recreate those nubbins that are on the glass as well as the slots that are in the case. So if we take a look here, we're going to start hiding out some panels using the tab key. This is going to be a little slow because there's a lot of geometry. But you can see right here, if we zoom in, you can see that these nubbins that are attached to the glass are slotting into here. So we're going to have to kind of recreate that so that the original glass can slot into something and then that spacer can slot into the case. So we're going to open up this panel, this glass assembly. And we don't need the actual glass, we just need this frame and we're going to kind of work off this. So to do this, we're actually going to uh, delete out this glass. So we don't need that. We do need the rest of the items that are on here. But in order to work with this as a part so that we can add in some extrude bosses and cuts as we want, we're just going to save this out as a part file. Now we got this opened up as a part. We can go in and we can start making new geometry. You can see that these used to all be part files in an assembly. Now we just have eight solid bodies. So we're going to go in and I'm going to quickly clean up all the gaps and start extruding this through. So I'm going to rip through that in time lapse because it's just a basic extrude. Okay, so there we go. We have the spacer all extruded out. I still have some cleanup to do. I gotta cut these nubbins off here, these like top parts that would slot in because they don't actually need to slot. For the um, spacer, it's just the glass that needs to slot in. And I got some weird geometry there. Fill in these gaps. Um, but I'm gonna quickly go over to the main case and copy over that geometry that I need. So I'm gonna do some copying and converting of the slots that are in here. I'm going to time lapse through it because it's a lot of tedious choosing edges. But I'm going to get the profile of this, um, the profile across here and here. So those three slots and then it's two slots on the side as well. So I'm going to quickly go through and convert and get some geometry there.
So there we have it. We have the slots all done. I did a lot of it off camera because it turned out it was very time consuming and just very tedious trying to get all the slots and everything in the right place. So I've got the slots here on the side and the slots on the top. Uh, so they're just one cut for the main and then another cut in between to allow for a space for that to sit in. The parts are going to be printed sitting this way. So there's going to be a lot of bridging there. I cut these out a little bit deeper so that I can come back in and radius the inside edge and then we can kind of cut down on the amount of bridging that the uh, printer has to do and hopefully eliminate any uh, support material on the inside because I think it's going to be hard to clean the support material out of there if we need be. Uh, so I also cleaned up kind of the, the tabs that were left over from the glass. So this spacer should be good to go. I just have to slice it into some components to actually fit on the printer. One thing I wanted to show you guys before I left though is Brendan knew this was going to be on the channel. So he's allowing us to do a little bit of branding on his case. So we're going to put our logo on the feet. I don't want to put it like smack dab in the middle because I want to retain like the clean look of his case. So I think we're just going to do up a little logo on the sides and see how those come out. Let's go. So there we have it. We've got the logo thrown onto the feet. We're going to do it to the opposite side. I'm going to get to printing all of this stuff. Uh, it's actually going to get it shipped across Canada. So I got to quickly get all this put together and sent off to them. But let's see how it turned out. Let's go. Cat friends, I think the case turned out amazing. Brennan was super happy with it. It was nice and clean. Those little logos were just enough to kind of stand out. And most importantly, the graphics card actually fits now. I hope you guys enjoyed another Cat to Reality video. We post every week, so make sure you're subscribing to see all those. I will catch you guys in the next project.